It's uh, 6, and we can see you. It's uh, 601 on uh, Thursday, the 16th of November, and I'm gonna call the regular select board meeting to order. First item is set adjust agenda. Does anybody have anything? Yes. We need to add an item number four, the select board to consider providing a letter of support for the transportation alternative grant. Draft letter has been provided and it was in the drive. And then there's an item, add an item five. And if you can explain what that is. Um, it's a resolution to authorize the town manager to accept the project grant funds for the $1.2 million Brownfields grant for the Yellow Bar and soil contamination cleanup. You'll have to twist our arms on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, so we have, so those, adding those two, the item four and five, anybody have anything else? Good, I have a motion to amend the agenda to include those. So moved. Second. All in favor of amending the agenda, please say aye. 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 Good, that's everybody, so motion carries. Um, next up is so communication from the audience. Helm, are you? Yeah. Yeah. Can you state your name? Oh, Helm Lodeman. I live on uh, Pumpkin Bay. And I'm a farmer. And the reason I'm here today is uh, to address the to address the uh, bridge on uh, the Hybrid Farms Road. And I would like to uh, talk a little bit about it, if that's okay. Yeah, now's the time. Okay, as, as we all know, the bridge got destroyed during the flood. It then was repaired by neighbors, neighbor farmers, who donated material, equipment, time to make the bridge so they could pass we could pass without manure spreader, spreaders and hay equipment as well as tractors. Uh, the road was officially closed. It was open by our understanding for ag equipment only. And we were very much aware that we, we drove over, quote, our own bridge. Uh, we, that was our risk since it was officially closed. Then, without any consultation to any one of the farmers that I'm aware of, the bridge was then, the Wildo Bridge, was then replaced uh, by the town uh, equipment uh, people. They used some of our material, quite a few of our uh, big cement blocks, concrete blocks. Uh, some sand, of course they had some, some of their own equipment. Then they is, then installed a bridge that I'm told they got on a loan from the state, whatever. It's 12 feet 9 inches. There is no way to get across with any one of the farm equipment. Nobody ever talked to us. All of a sudden, boom, it was done. Uh, we're now approaching winter and construction is going to get more difficult as we all know and right after winter there's going to be springtime which is the time we need a bridge because see every time uh both the legacies and i we have each of us about 200 acres of land that we have on the other side there that we tend to and so it's just impossible to always go down Porter Brook and then make a right onto uh, Santa Road. It is also not very safe for equipment, fire equipment, to travel at 17 miles an hour uh, on Santa Road. So I would like to know whether you all have a schedule for that bridge. Why? It was so Vermont what we did fixing it. And then all of a sudden it was fixed. Uh, blah, blah. Sorry. Uh, 
So I would like to know a schedule, and I would like you all to think about how important it is to fix it. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have any? Yeah. Yeah. What do we What do we know? So, from the beginning, remember to go back to the beginning of when the bridge got washed out. We talked to John Lagus. Yeah. Gave him permission to fix the bridge, so he could get his equipment across. Right. Yeah. That was a a, huge, a big concern. Um, that they needed to get their equipment across the bridge. We decided to get the temporary bridge structure in there so we could open the road back up, so we could plow the road for the winter time. We couldn't plow the road, we couldn't plow a closed road with our equipment. So we would have to go down and turn around and plow back up. So we would have not plowed the road from center road down to the bridge if the road was closed for the winter. So the justification to put the bridge in was to keep the road open for the winter. So the two houses at the bottom that we could get in there. Otherwise, we'd have to go down and turn around and go back up. So that was the justification for putting in the bridge. When the bridge went out, we have to uh, request a hydraulic study from the state. That was requested and fast-tracked. That was the we we have we have just I just received the hydraulic study from the state that is to determine what what size structure we put in there because we can't put the same size structure in because it'll get flooded out again once we get another rain event so we have the hydraulic study we need to have the bridge the new structure engineered so we're putting that out to bid for engineering because we have to follow our procurement procedures. And then once the, the bridge is designed, the structure is designed for that area, and I've got some ideas, I've got some things up my sleeve to get that done quickly and cost effectively. Um, I'm going to ask the city of Burlington, which they've offered up municipal assistance to us for engineering. So I'm gonna ask them if they would do that engineering for us, which would cost us a lot less. Once we get that engineering done, we can put the structure out to bid, that, that construction project out to bid. Um, that is a crapshoot at this point with the construction companies. And, but the sooner we get that out to bid, the sooner people will bid on it and put that on their docket first thing in the spring. My thoughts are, first thing in the spring, we close the road, we rip out that bridge, and you can have your, your farm bridge back. That's, that's my, my quick solution to the problem. So, what you just, what I understand, what you just said, is that you changed our, let's call it the homemade bridge, for a very small, narrow bridge to accommodate two houses along the road. Forgetting about no, farms. That's this is, in my mind, this is a total, <coughs> total not caring. And whether or not you plow that piece of road or, or hire somebody to do it, it's still less than have every truck that goes to Legacy's, for instance, go around the other way. And you know, it's not only time, it's also fuel. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get into it. Yeah. But anyway, I just feel that the town has displayed absolute terrible disrespect for farms. Mm -hmm. Because how long ago did it happen? And you're still thinking about asking for a bid. And I know that everybody was overwhelmed. And I, you know. If we don't ask for a bid, we won't get reimbursed for the funds from FEMA. But why, why do you have to ask for a bid in November? Because we, were, we had to wait for the, we had 
right away had asked for the the uh, hydraulic study for the study of the water in the river which we needed to do first before we could get the bridge designed because the idea is if the if that stream washed out the previous bridge the original bridge then another similar if we just rebuilt it the next I, I, yeah. under, I understand that but why did you have to take the egg that's going to egg bridge out to accommodate some small cars I, I think it I think it was to we're accommodating the entire town rather than I helm I am just, I want I'm the farmers are my really my first priority and they were the day after the flood that's why we gave them permission gave you guys permission to put that bridge in no, no, I understand that. Right. So we're not. So, and the state doesn't have any extra wide bridges. That's the. This is the only single lane. This is the only bridge they have with that length to put in there. The bridge. The state bridge engineers have come back. They're going to give me some recommendations on how I can fix the problem. And if we can straighten that approach out, then the tractor trailer trucks can get through. That doesn't fix the farm machinery pro problem. I understand that. I've been in contact with John through this process from the beginning. And I, I don't think that I'm disregarding or disrespecting any of the farmers by what I've done. Although we have to think about the entirety of the town and the safety of getting from point A to point B and being able to plow the roads and keep them open. If that farm bridge was in there, we wouldn't plow that road. And that was the justification for putting in a bridge. It's, it's unfortunate that the state only didn't have any extra wide bridges, didn't have any two-lane bridges available, and a two-lane bridge wouldn't have fit in there. So that's where we're, that's, we're stuck. Well, I don't find anything wrong with one-lane bridges. That's not the point. But that particular bridge is so narrow, it's also at the angle. Yeah, the approach. That, and that's apparently an engineering problem. We're working on that. But uh, 12 feet nine inches is just not wide enough. It's it is a it's wider than a single, it's a single lane, lane bridge. That's what on, it, the, on road. That's what the state provided with us. A, with a, uh, we have single lane bridges crossing Portable Road uh, right on the way mm -hmm. to Modify, mm -hmm. and that is. Passable by regular trucks, by farm equipment, and I tell you the truth, I never measured the width of it. I never got out to see what, how wide it is. But it is single, single lane in one direction. There's a place to pull over in the mm -hmm. other, which is very healthy. It's very good. And but to put a basic footprint, footbridge over. Obi, why couldn't you plow the bridge that they put? Yeah, how would you? Li liability. We didn't put the bridge in. And that the bridge is, in, in theory, the bridge is probably plenty strong enough. But if one of our, if, if somebody goes through the bridge, yeah. the milk truck, the grain truck, or our, our plow truck go through the bridge, like, we're on a closed road. Right. That's, that's, the, that's a problem. You that's a have. big problem. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So it also sounds like um, Obi's working on solutions. So he's currently working on um, trying to figure out a way to realign the bridge or the or yeah, the approach to the bridge for the, for the immediate, so the milk truck for right the now, truck can get through. So there. The, so the big trucks can get through because it is wide enough for the trucks. I mean, trucks can drive in a lane that's eleven mm -hmm. feet wide. But they can't get on. They can't get. On they can't the get bridge. on it because of the approach. So right. you're gonna. You're going to work with state engineers to figure out a way mm -hmm. to uh, realign something to make it so the trucks can get through right. for the winter. Yeah. And with a temporary bridge in there for the winter, it can be plowed and we'll get it aligned so that, so that we can get trucks through. And then you further have said that in the springtime, if we don't have a good other solution, we'll mo remove that temporary bridge as soon as we don't have to plow anymore, right, roughly? Yep. And then the road will be technically closed again, but you'll be back to what you had before that temporary bridge came in. Oh. Okay. So I think 
I, that's I, the plan? Yeah, that's the plan. That's what I just said. That was my plan. So I think as it stands right now, that's my plan. If we can get and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this that when the construction happens for that bridge, that bridge is gonna be out of commission for a couple months. So we the timing of that is important. Is important. Yeah. And if we take so say we got all the bids in and we got the project ready to go. I don't want to yank that bridge and have them do the work first thing in the spring when you guys have to haul manure and get cows situated and start haying. That's something that I might want to do or work with the farmers to do in the fall once the harvest is in and the manure is all spread. Like this time of year next year. I don't. We're going to have to really work together on that. Okay. So your first step is going to be to straighten out the angle. Mm -hmm. That's that's my that's my plan for the fall. For right now. In the in the early winter. All right, I guess. If that's, if that's what it is, that's what it is. Well, I think it sounds like that'll get alleviate most of the problems. Uh, well, right now we don't have farm equipment problems or very few, right. obviously. But it's big truck problems. Right. And and there's, so he's working there's on that. one two, three, four other ways in currently right now. I know it's a little longer and it's a little more cumbersome, but there are, there are some alternatives short term. But you're working on it. Okay. So I definitely appreciate you coming and sharing your concerns because I think we don't necessarily know what you're thinking unless you come. So I'm glad you, it's good to, to hear from you and that it sounds like we're proceeding faster faster than we can because we get yeah. we already got that hydraulic study from the state which is right. the first one we've gotten and oh for any of they, them they put it right to the top yep. i mean okay. we have representatives that are working on this too like there's state reps there's the commissioner of E-Trans, like this isn't just a hardwood problem. Like everybody's trying to work on this. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for coming. And sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the show. You want another cookie? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to move us along. So next uh, is select board to approve the minutes from last time, which was November the 2nd. Motion to approve. Second. Any comments or questions on the minutes from last time? All in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Yeah, I was there. Okay. So that's three ayes and one abstention. This motion carries. Um, next, uh, town manager report given by Mr. Upson. So um, the first bullet on my manager's report was Hardwick Farms Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> but we just covered it. Um, you beat me to it, which is good. It short, shortens up my manager's report. So um, the Clean Water uh, revolving State Revolving Loan Fund uh, that we're working on forgivable loans um, up to $150,000 um, with the th a three hundred and fifty dollar loan, a three hundred and twenty-five to three hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan, it's confusing. But okay. for engineering and design of the wastewater plants, so they're starting to put together. The state is starting to put together funding packages for redesign of our wastewater plants. Great. Um, okay. So we're we have a task force, a wastewater plant task force with Johnson um, and Ludlow. And oh, Harvard, really? With um, nice. the contractor um, that the state hired for FEMA consulting and Vermont Emergency Management and the DEC. So we're, Excellent. we're meeting like once a week, once every other week um, to move that process forward. Uh, we're working on having the plant get a substantial damage declaration or a substantial damage um, inspection. Mm -hmm. And it's more than just like the structure, it's the facility. Mm -hmm. So it includes the lift stations as well. 
So we're moving forward as fast as government moves um, for the redesign and relocation of the plant. Great. Um, more to come on that as, as the, the months go by. So Johnson and Ludlow are in a similar yep. situation. Yep. yep. They were, their plants were completely wiped out. Um, Johnson's still running their UV, I believe, on an emergency generator. Um, and they will be for the foreseeable future wow. because they have UV disinfection. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, which uses a lot of power. Yeah. Um, we have we now have uh, NEKHS um, mental health support person down at the inn. They're also um, placed there through FEMA uh, for a period of time for flood recoveries. Um, people that are experiencing. Um, the need for mental health support for um, any hardships, financial hardships, um, health, well-being stuff. Um, they're they're down on the third floor of the inn, um, rooms eight and nine. So the Hardwick Inn. Yeah. Yeah. So if if someone reaches out to Northeast Kingdom Human Services, or even the town, or even town, they can direct so them. It's two. It's two separate. There's there's one person doing two jobs. Yep. And the FEMA stuff is one, and then NEKHS crisis work is the other. Okay. Um, but they're new, um, a new employee, and, and she's great. Her name's Alex. Great. Yep. Um, and then I have the grant match for the transportation alternatives. Do we want to do want to discuss that now? Wait, do, is it, Did we? Why don't we just do it in the item? I think yeah. that was okay. Yeah. Um, and then neighbor to neighbor is working on the local emergency management plan. Um, they're going to take bits and pieces of it, and um, they're working on an update for it. So we, it's like a boilerplate document that we update every year. Mm -hmm. um, we had a debrief a couple weeks ago about how we handled the flood, and they're working on trying to like fine tune that plan and fill in the gaps and. Mm -hmm so we can be better prepared for future disasters, whether they be flood, blizzards, um, heat, heat related events, um, or you know, pandemics likely to happen again, <laughs> unlikely to happen again, hopefully, mm -hmm. but um, they're working on that. That's just a brief overview of what's going yeah. on. Yeah. And we had a bridge meeting this morning. We had a bridge meeting this morning and we're working on getting the bridge design out to bridge manufacturers. We have a <coughs> stiff deadline on that, which is middle of December. Mm -hmm. um, so I think things are moving. This is the pedestrian bridge. Pedestrian, pedestrian bridge. Downtown. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. Good. A lot going on. Thank you. Do you want to offer any updates for the road report or the police report? Um, our police department was busy this morning with an early morning raid on Elm Street, corner of Elm Street and Spring Street. Uh, it was a multi-agency um, effort, and I believe arrests were made. Um, <coughs> the case was led by federal agency, so I don't know what we'll see in terms of press or, or media releases. Oh, uh, so we won't see like a local or state police? I don't think so. No. Okay. no you got to look for it. Okay. Um, it might be on the website in a couple of days. They're not as fast yeah. as the local agencies. Um, and these guys have been doing Christmas lights. They've been putting... Um, Fine tune in the roads. They've been putting. They put a new section of banners up. I know they were working on a water leak down on Elm on um, Mitchell Lane, and um, they're checking out another water leak tomorrow and getting the trucks ready. Tom's International is not going to be ready till mid January. <laughs> really? Yeah. There's a part that's needed that yeah. just can't get. He's been sources um, because Allegiance is unable to get it um, but so far no luck Wow yep so he'll be plowing with the f-250 be plow and then we will have the 550 here in another week or so 
Okay. And they're sort of adapting their plowing plans to the to consider the trailhead and the potential uh, on Creamery Road and then the potential of spring work at, starting at the townhouse. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. Can't fill that up because we need to we have the snow. Right. Right. Thank you. Again. <coughs> All right. Um, next up. Uh, we have Roger Prevo here from the Hardwick Electric Department report. Hey, hello everybody. So I'll, I think I can be pretty brief tonight, uh, or at least a lot of time for questions and discussion. Um, some prepared points I wanted to cover. Walk at Hydro, which was pretty well wiped out by the flood. <clears throat> the process of, of tearing down, cleaning up and then in that process evaluating what's needed to repair it is moving forward. Um, we don't have any um, bad news that's come out of that, but we don't have any good news. So we're still in that range if you were to ask me the question of when will it be up and running. Uh, we don't know yet. And we've got to get equipment out. It has to be evaluated, maybe rebuilt, maybe just repaired, and then bring it all back together. So, you know, in all likelihood, this is going to be a long path to getting, getting the hydro back into production. Um, we're, we're hopeful that maybe in the next couple months we'll get to the point where at least we can pin down the schedule. We'll know how much it'll cost and how long it'll take. And, and we'll, we'll update you on that. Um, the other project that's going on, I know some of you in the room are aware of, is the Yellow Barn project. And that is that the, uh, the cost to, of interconnection with, hard, with the Hardwick Electric was going to be prohibitive. So there's been a good, I think, amount of activity since the last meeting we had um, in terms of trying to work to a lower demand of, for electricity from the project, which would then lower the cost of interconnection, hopefully, and get the project going with a little bit different scope and, and cost. So we'll keep supporting that if, if there's any concerns or questions. I think, Eric, you're going to come to the... I'm planning on coming. ...electric yeah. department yeah. meeting, so that'll be good. Um, the, uh, the other thing to circle back to, and I'll, I'll give an example, is <clears throat> I think a number of us, when we've come here, we've commented for the purpose of letting you know and the broader public know that um, there really is a continuing shortage right now of transformers. That's been... That's a potential issue for the yellow barn because that's especially large equipment. But even the more normal equipment that you see on the poles all around town have just been in short supply with long lead times. So even pretty routine projects when they come up now, it can be 26, 28 weeks to get transformers. What we're trying to do, we're, we're cash constrained at Hardwick Electric right now, so we have to do it carefully and thoughtfully, but we're trying to order transformers and batches where we might have a definitive project identified for certain of the transformers and then we'll add a few to try to get ahead of it in anticipation of new projects coming in. But we realize that we're a bottleneck for what people want to do, for what businesses want to do, for what people need to do, and uh, it's going to continue. There's no, there's no indication, it's not really a, like, things that came up during COVID and are now basically, you know, going away over time. This is really the whole electrification of the country, you know, with, with, with electric vehicle charging, with um, people switching their heat and their appliances over to electricity. So the need for increased service is there across the country and the demand for transformers are up. So an example, and this is a good news project, um, Grace Johnstone, who operates her business in, East, in the village of East Hardwick, um, has put a lot of work into trying to get going two level two electric vehicle chargers. And um, we've had some dialogue with Grace. She's lined up uh, a business to do the installation. And, um, and she's at the point right now where she needs us at Hardwick Electric to figure out, to get her a quote for what she needs to do to increase her service, to support two level two chargers, and to get her a lead time. And so that's now a key project for us, and we'll be pushing it forward. And we'll keep you up to date. The reason I thought I'd bring it up, and I got Grace's permission to bring it up with you, is that 
I know together we've been concerned that we're just not getting enough electric vehicle charging around town, but this looks like a good project with a really sincere sponsor making her parking lot available and, and ready to go through. So she's going to have to fill in an application and pay an application fee to get <laughs> the detailed quote and go through all that. So it's really a credit to her uh, that she's going through all this extra work and steps and putting her money out there to try to make it happen. But we'll do what, what we can to support her. Um, the other uh, comment is, is when the year started and I came in and others came in, we mentioned that the cost of purchase power was through the roof. In the first months of the year, we really depleted our cash balance and we were very quickly getting to the point where we, had, we were going to have to start borrowing and using a, a line of credit we have. Um, we stopped all the capital projects we could stop uh, to conserve our cash. Um, things have eased up a little bit now, but we're still moving toward two things. One is the borrowing, because we need to get capital projects done, particularly the Yellow Barn, whatever its scope, we'll need to borrow to do that. But we'll, uh, we're also preparing to do a rate increase for next year. And so that's a long process as we did for, for last year. But there'll be something, it'll be a, a lower amount increase than we did last time. But, but that's in the cards coming through. And uh, clearly, for much of this year, we were spending more money to provide our power than we were bringing in. And so our cash balance was going down month by month. That's stabilized a bit now, but it's, um, it's a situation we have to remedy. Um, that's it. You know, otherwise, we're, um, I think we're solid. Uh, there's nothing else I need to point to, but open it up for any questions or concerns. Where are transformers made? That's a good question that is <laughs> above my pay grade. Um, I wish I knew that because I'd like to dazzle you with my knowledge, but I don't. <laughs> okay. um, the, the there's a, there is a charger over here at the electric department parking lot, no? There is a beautiful charger is it getting that used? is not operable right now. Oh. We're, and we're crushed because we got the message, we got it installed, we got it ready to go. It's fully operable now, except for one thing. We've gotten into a regulatory review process where we have to get a rate approved. Because it's owned by the electric department? Because it's the electric department selling its electric electricity, we have to go through the same process we'd go through to set the rates up. Wow. Uh, and that is a wow. I mean, shame on us for not yeah. knowing that. So it's not like a business that puts in a... No, like Grace Johnstone's project doesn't have that right. issue. So. Right. Gotta love the red tape. Yeah. So so if you hear that, it's no, no it is beautiful. It's in a good place. <laughs> but it's not usable. But it's not usable yet. And that's embarrassing to say, but we're moving as fast as we can to get it have any idea how long I it's don't going to be. because of the same issue of yeah working through that. I've had two different you know people random people ask Do, is there a charger in this town I know, mm -hmm. I know. right downtown so we got to get both of those going and you know we're still we're we're still ready to support anybody in town you know if we had the co-op possibility that hasn't shown much action recently, but if, if there's any other, if there's someone like a Grace Johnstone here in town who could get behind a project. Now would be the time to do it down at the co-op because they have trenches already dug in their parking lot. For a while. <laughs> <laughs> For a good long while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, have you guys looked at grants for the transmission line uh, upgrades? Is that instead of loans or lo low interest, zero interest loans through federal agencies? Or uh, Eric has connected us. We, we, the answer is one of our commissioners has gone out and found a number of different sources. Good. They weren't grants. They were low you know, interest, very low interest loans. And then yeah. Eric has forwarded us a contact for the USDA program. Okay. So between those, the way it's working is. Um, 
because these projects will be, we have some uncertainty as what the ultimate cost of the project will be. Right. And we'll, for example, walk it. You know, we'll have to spend a little money on this and then a little money on that, and then we'll find out how much the next thing is. So we're going to cover that through a line of credit where mm -hmm. we can draw it as we need it. Right, right. And borrow only what we need. And then once we know how much debt we have to finance, then we can go to USDA or one of the other and through one of their pro and we don't want to miss any grant opportunity either. USDA also has some grants apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we have a meeting with the select board in the HED set up? Because I had it on my calendar for Monday. Is that not happening? Not happening. When are we going to meet with them? Where are we going to? We were going to. Okay. Yeah, we didn't have a. We need There's a, no agenda. agenda. There's no agenda items. I, yeah. We I can need, work on I that. Need agenda items. I can't make them up. Okay. We I can, got one. We can work on that for I don't know when December or mm -hmm. January. Be fun. Yeah. So I I have two. Yeah. Quick, so um, a uh, big thank you to Mike for including me on the on the agenda that went out and that was great because one because it was a reminder and two because the meeting is it starts at four and on the website it says five. Oh, good catch we and just moved it from five to four start because we were going so late into the night and that agenda that he sent around isn't on the website or the it wasn't wasn't up, wasn't up yet and it looks like there aren't minutes. I think the most recent minutes might be August. Yeah, you know, there's a lag between when we we get them approved. But I think you're supposed to. Do, yeah, I we think should. You have five we're days. Five calendar, you have five, days. five calendar days. Good reminder. Okay, you so can put draft minutes. That's a perennial yeah, you can do draft. issue for us. Yeah. I know. So but we'll get I perennial bring, perennially bring it up. I know. <laughs> we'll get the timing. We'll get the. <laughs> We'll get the timing of posting the minutes. We'll get that the time yeah. of the meeting. Yeah, that'd be so great. Too. Yeah. Um, and it. then my other comment, which I mentioned to you and I'll bring to the meeting on Monday, is that um, it is great that the Yellow Barn project and that whole grid connection thing seems to be working in the, I mean, the original ask from the Yellow Barn engineers was for a thousand uh, KVA kilovolt amp transformer service, and now most their most recent estimate is down to 425. So that's just a lot better, right? But even if we get it down to a point where um, Hardwick Electric says, "Yeah, we can hook this up," or however that happens, my question or comment is that um, it seems to me that without doing the full upgrade of the circuit, that Hardwick in general, and or actually the whole service area potentially, is going to be kind of strapped for any new connections of any size. And I hope that's what you're intending to bring up. That is. Yeah, that's good. So I just so wanted to you. throw that out there because yeah. as a question or a concern. It's sort of a community and economic development obstacle. Right, exactly. To, to at least understand it and then try to problem solve it. I mean, yeah. for example, um, the new wastewater plant that we're working on is if we likely go the way, gonna need more power likely gonna need a lot more power and yeah I mean it'd be nice if it was there when we needed it not like a year and a half out anyway yeah because nowadays we've got the two problems of how much does it cost and, and what's how the lead long time. does it take right and we could send away well we could either delay an important project like wastewater or we could send away some business that could have been here right you can't yeah right here to, that's a good topic all right thank, thank you, you. I'm gonna, thank we'll thanks go so much thanks. uh all right next up is um business manager casey rowell to present uh fiscal year 25 budget first drafts of capital buildings fire line items police and highway wow a lot. Yeah. Um,
Are you offering those to Danny? <laughs> you can't see him. <laughs> Danny Opie's offering you cookies. <laughs> <laughs> He had some. He had some this afternoon. Oh, dinner! But it's the thought that counts. Uh, I had that today, boy. They were wicked good cookies, too. By the way. <laughs> I'll be at the monitor another one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's what you think. <laughs> we might finish them up. I was thinking my left. I should have grabbed an extra one. They were good cookies. <laughs> that would have been your reminder that we had a meeting tonight. <laughs> yeah. Well, I apologize. I just no, 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 I missed this one. <laughs> but, go here through. we go, Danny. We're right up your alley. Dump trucks on the on the screen. <laughs> yeah, the unit that numbers are no, not real. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, have these in front of you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> as you notice. June 30th, 2023, balance got all the way down to $3,600. Yeah, that is scary. Um, part of that reason being is that the equipment that we purchased recently basically cost a lot more than we anticipated. Oh. The F550, for instance, um, was, I think we had put eighty or 90000 It was like one thirty. Right. Um, the excavator was like 165. So it's not typical for our balance to get that low. Right. And so basically what's happening now, and we've also been informed that the big dump trucks, trucks one through four, mm -hmm. um, they get replaced one every eight years. So they're not usually in the same year um, that we are looking at probably a 40 to $50,000 increase on those. Wow. So that's why, um, in order for the town to continue replacing equipment at the, you know, on the schedule mm -hmm. that we have, um, we have to increase pretty significantly what we're setting aside, and that's going to continue. Um, as you'll notice, um, in the current year we set aside 150, we're going to have to go up to 270, and we'll need to continue that trend for several years <laughs> just to be able to continue replacing our equipment at these levels. So this is great that you're pointing this out. Um, so the, the dump truck numbers, are those with the additional money or not? The ones on the left? Yes. So mm -hmm. those are updated pricing? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, dump truck two is a little bit less because that's like the smaller village truck. It's not the full size one. So that's why. Yep. But, um, okay. Tom and I had a conversation recently um, one of the problems that we're running into is the lead time on these trucks and our ability to trade. Um, we're gonna probably be put into positions where we won't be able to trade the trucks, which hurts us because we are gonna because we can't go without the truck until we get the new one and the timing of it. Um, so that's why, once again, these prices are a lot higher because we may have to pay the full sticker price then try to sell the truck after. We, we're probably not going to be able to do a trade-in, which is going to be not great. <laughs> so I have a question about, I mean, we don't need to delve into this now, but I want to throw out the question about um, do we have enough information or would it be possible for us to do some sort of cost-benefit analysis of trading every eight years versus every 10, for example, or every six, or like our, is eight our optimal number? And I think it's less than that. I mean, by the time so we get, by the time we get to eight years. Oh. Eight there's no way the equipment will not. So it, we're struggling to make the eight year mark. So yeah, that's that's what I was okay. about to say was that eight years is really pushing it. All so eight years is yeah. the outside. Because at this point, you know, our next it's truck to be stretch. traded is number four, um, and that one's a 2017, and we are really starting to dump money into it. Like that's that's what happens at this point. So so I don't and think we can go any longer than eight. There's a lot more, sorry, I wish I'd gotten the meeting. <laughs> well, there's a lot more risk, um, you know, paying for a truck and then us being responsible for resale. There's a lot, every town in the, in the country is doing the same thing. There's a lot of those trucks out there in the same year range with the same equipment with the same problems. 
Uh, that's why if you go by, if you go down to Underhill, their yards full of used town trucks and state trucks. Um, they're everywhere. Nobody wants them. So just just know that there's a there's a risk to that um, that there isn't when you trade them in. I mean that's why trading them in you get a little bit less money. Resale on your own is always gonna you know should benefit you, but it doesn't always. So you just need to keep an eye you know keep thought about that. That's all. Yeah, I, I and those numbers, the numbers you have there, two hundred twenty thousand and twenty-five for dump truck four. I don't believe is accurate. I would say that's going to be way more than two fifty, two sixty. Mark, it would be my prediction. Um, I think I, okay, that uh, what, yeah, that's fine. I, we can definitely revisit that. Um, I did kind of share this with Tom. He's thinking like two forty-ish, with maybe getting twenty for the truck. So that's. Like even yeah. after that would be like the net. The net would right. be too tight. No, I'm just I'm just yeah. saying that that stuff is stupid. I mean, I'm actually on the new truck site right now, <laughs> um, and stuff is just being is crazy, and it's not uh, it's not lasting either. Like you know, six years legitimately, things start falling apart these days. I mean, it's terrible. Trucks the 2019. We're in 23. It's like four years old and. That thing's at the shop every time we turn around. That the truck number yeah. two that's not ready till January. It's it's very problematic. Everything's computerized. That thing's been towed several times. It's yeah, it's not ideal. It really isn't. They don't make them like they used to. So the bottom well. line is we're gonna have to we're gonna have to we're gonna have to put more money in our in this. Yeah. Uh, so that's piece. that's oh, what we about we're to look at what we're grand. doing. Now we're doing things. You know, Tommy's not there, and I don't want to talk behind his back, but I think we could do a little bit better with our maintenance. Um, I was going to say that we can, you know, the cost-benefit analysis of having an on-staff mechanic. Yep. I did but is that even mention, possible? Um, we don't have a facility for it. Yeah, I did Well, yeah, I mean, that's that. the other thing, is we don't really have a facility, to be honest with you. The, usually drivers do a lot of the simple maintenance themselves and we don't have a facility for me to do that if I was there I wouldn't be encouraged to crawl into that truck when I can't even walk around it <laughs> and work on it uh, that's certainly certainly true there yep. um, but yeah having a, a, an on-site maintenance guy might be the key I don't know but we, sh we should look at it because um, we're not going to be able to afford to continue and, and we've got ourselves in a situation as well where, you know, we now all of our equipment is the same age. Um, it doesn't get used all the same amount, so we might be able to gain a year or two on something, but essentially buying everything all new in one year, the graded loader estimator, yeah. um, will be problematic when we go to, you know, when they, they start getting worn out as well. I think the loader and grader is probably the only thing that we're like in the yeah. same year. Yeah, and but the, the, the life expectancy of the excavator is going to be longer than a truck, a loader. All right, but the the trucks are staggered anyway. Yeah. Yeah, they are, but they're not. They're not lasting eight years, so. Right. Am I right in remembering that within the last year or so we gave Tom? The okay to go ahead and get something to replace a truck that was only seven years old, but it was so so badly shot that it wasn't um, worth I fixing. I think what it was is we actually moved up truck number that was the one, got moved up a year in the schedule, but that was like in the it was kind of yeah. planned for in the town report. So we just, we just got to understand that, that this needs to be watched, and we we're going to need yeah to, we're going to have to, to keep a close eye on it because certainly. The expectation that it would get down to thirty-six hundred dollars. There's, there's like more than that, but the um, a bunch of it belongs to the fire. So fire equipment has two hundred something. So those two combined have about two eighteen. Um, but we are sort of tracking fire separately. So yeah. So anyway, that's. Yeah. That's okay. So that's the news. Can we <laughs> got a plow on a fire truck. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Fire is a little more straightforward. Um, the debt payments that you used to see on here are now in line items. Oh, whoops, I forgot to go to it. Excuse me, sorry. Um, I gotta get over here, sorry. Okay, all right. So um, for this year, looking at starting to bump it up about 20 grand a year um, to sort of keep with our schedule. And, and again, 
this is one of those things we're going to have to keep an eye on because some of these prices could be fifty to one hundred thousand dollars more. But if you look ahead, there's only one year, two thousand thirty-two. Um, where the balance sort of gets pretty low in 2030. Um, mm -hmm. So we've got a little bit of time to work on this, but for right now, we're, we're okay. We're building. Ooh. We've got 200,000. We're going to, we've got 235 right now, and we're going to add another 40. So we're, we're building that up. So that and we're, we're shooting for 750. <sighs> yeah. We're, we don't want to bond for the next fire truck. Right. That was right. the idea. We're right. going right. to have one of them paid off the 2000. 14 will be yeah we've got a ways to go <laughs> we're yeah. almost well we're almost 10 years into the 2014 so we've got like oh yeah six six years left on that one so yeah um so that's pretty straightforward any questions about the fire one mm -mm. No. okay go to road okay um, so this, we're not doing a big bump up because um, we've sort of planned for Center Road, um, 550000 in hopes that we could get a couple hundred thousand in paving aid. Um, so this is still sort of just going up 5000 and we're continuing to do annual paving. What I will say is we are not going to have any paving done this summer. Um, this well, year? This year. Um, right. They can't get to us. Yeah, they couldn't get to us, um, so we won't have any paving expense, so that money will stay in here, but that's probably going to change the schedule. Um, more than likely, we had North Main Street and Vermont Ave scheduled, so those will probably get done next summer, and we already had, fiscal year what, 26 was like to be determined, I think, and hideaway, so yeah, we're going to probably do those, and then the following summer, Center Road. So it's what we expected. It's year 25. Hutchins. Hutchins. They basically yeah, so just blew us off. <laughs> they got caught up they on didn't 302 in New Hampshire, and, and then they had some warranty work, I think, with the state. Yes, you know what excuses are, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> But so just make a note of that next time. That you know what I'm saying. That we got. Yeah. Well, that's, that's kind of what I feel like. If we get another bid from them, are we gonna, are we gonna yeah. honor? Are, you know, are we gonna consider it? And I don't think. I think that's a factor right there. I think it's a huge factor because that's a that's a that's there's no excuse for that. Not the amount of pavement we needed. They could squeeze that in in a few days. Yeah. If they got their shit together, they're a big outfit. Yeah. So just to, to blow us off is unacceptable yeah. in my world. I agree. So. Yeah, well, we all need to remember that next year when the paving bids come in. Don't worry. Oh, well, I got when it. When theirs is <laughs> You got it. Casey's got her eye on it. Don't forget. <laughs> okay, so any questions about the road one? Well, this is where I wanted to bring in a little historical information. Okay. A historical um, moment. Historical moment. I was reading through the proceedings of town meetings for 1866 and 1867. And in both of those town meetings, there was a item on the warning, will we vote money to pay for roads to, to, to what was the word, to maintain roads? was one year that was 66. They didn't vote on it, so the answer is no. And the second year, 67, was will we, will we pay money, will we fund money to repair bridges? And they didn't vote on that either, no. <laughs> you know, we, we could just stop maintaining the roads. It would save a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah. I think there's laws actually. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there are statutes. You can't so. completely <laughs> ignore it. I, well, I, and I think. I, no, he's gone. Well, and roads, you know, roads were not as important the then as he they are. He wants us to maintain the road the way he wants the road maintained. <laughs> My road. Danny's, Danny's arguing with himself again. <laughs> <laughs> he's on fire out there. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, the, so you know, Wiz, if we go back to times like that, that means everybody is plowing the section of road in front of their farm and their house. And I don't know Absolutely. if everybody's up for that. Right. Uh, that yeah. That would mean we wouldn't have to leave our house? 
<laughs> you would. Well, that's just that roads were not as important because people worked well, at home. Were they even paved? Yeah. Oh no. Oh, no. Yeah. They were not much. Well, they were not. That part. Most yeah. of, most of them didn't have stumps in them anymore, but uh, they weren't paved. <laughs> so no more questions beyond that on roads. Okay, so I'd like to move on to the general. Yeah, keep us on here. Um, okay, so I always put in like the balance of 23, what we're doing in the current year, and then yeah. basically your 25 is highlighted here. Um, basically, one of the biggest things is with the condition of our highway garage, we really need to start planning for that um, in terms of some feasibility, some design and engineering. So um, we currently have what, uh, a little over 50,000. I want to add 40,000 over the next three years um, to really get that up because realistically, um, you know, 100, 150,000 just in some of that work. Um, we've yeah. got to start doing something with that's really important. So most of the stuff is the same as the current year. I took a little bit here and there down just to bring that 40 up. I took a little from the memorial building because we just did our slate roof repair, which we had a 50% grant for. Um, and I took like to 5,000 from bridge fund, a little bit from the fire department because they just got their new roof, um, just to sort of be able to bump up the highway because that was a bigger priority. And everything else is pretty much the same. Brush cutting is now in the regular budget, so actually I can probably just move that right out because I used the rest of that money that was in there, so that can just come right off. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. What's going on with that new vault door? I was wondering the same thing, <laughs> yes. actually. Sorry with that. I can't answer Do we know? Um, I think my last conversation with the, the clerk was that um, she wanted to basically do some cleaning in there and really determine that, that there's um, maybe a lot of records that may or may not need to be in there. Um, and so we have to that do this again so that they don't throw things away so that they go to the historical society instead of getting pitched. No, I'm not saying she was like throwing anything away. Okay. Like I mean, clean is not the right word. Organize is, is okay. the better word. Um, okay. She wasn't indicating she was throwing anything away, mm -hmm. but getting a better handle on, you know, what really needs to be kept in there and so yeah, that was that she wanted to do that before personally. There were a lot of records door. in there that we actually moved to the historical society mm -hmm. because we thought that you know there's no reason to keep them here. But yeah. Yeah, and the state said no, 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 they have to go back there. That there's a lot of stuff in there that she's not allowed to move. Yeah, well, she just wanted to evaluate it and organize right. it and and tidy it up, I guess I would say, like the space itself and mm -hmm. get a little more organized um, and then look at that. That was, um, yeah, so that's, that's what I know about that. We have the funds to do it. I mean, we just, Yeah, but we, we put those funds in there quite a long time ago when it was urgent. Because it urgent. was like an urgent to be done. need and then mm -hmm. that seemed to dissipate. And, and if we wait, it's if it doesn't need to be done, that's fine, and we could move that money to like the town highway garage or something. That's great. But if it needs to be done, and we wait another ten years, it's going to cost more to do it. Right. Yeah. And I'm not Everything pushing this on you guys. I'm right. just saying, like we. It's, probably, it's not my matter department. of fact. It's no. Not my department. <laughs> matter of right. fact. Right. I, I, yeah. I don't want to speak for her. I just know, like I said, she wanted to. Get it's it tidied and organized in there a little bit. That's great. More. So um, the next time we go through this, maybe we on should her make radar. sure she's okay. ready to. I, I can make a point to get a update just, from her. Yeah, just so that we're, the next time we talk about it, we know whether we can move any of that or what where she's at with it. Okay. Thank you. I was curious about the cemetery updates. Mm. What's what's the town what's cemeteries in like the. I, yeah, we decided. It, it's been there forever. I, I can't answer where that really came from originally. Um, I thought that we put that there to start um, funding. Uh, I thought it was repairs. actually. I thought it was repairs. To, yeah, well, there's and, a fence. There's a fence up at Center Cemetery. There's the that. Yeah. The entry that could. Be yeah, repaired. that needs to be yeah. replaced. Yeah. I had Lucian go up and look at that. Oh. Did he bring back a bid? No, he said it wasn't to repair it. 
No, it's it needs not, to be replaced. Yeah, it's not the same material that he would use. Yeah. There's a difference in, like... 120 like years. Hollow. Yeah. Yeah, it is hollow, iron, isn't it? And yeah. Rod iron. Or yeah. Whatever, so. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think that's for, for now. Let's move on. I think. Make a note of that accrued interest number for a later discussion. Okay. Um, yes, that is right down here. Yep, 23. Okay. Um, buildings. Got two pages. Everybody make a note. This yep. is relatively straightforward. Um, Fuel prices have stabilized. We were um, able to get a fixed rate in the current year and would anticipate we could probably do that again. So there's not a lot of change in any of these small amounts, like $1,500 here. Um, and basically, um, based on previous expenditures, increasing the maintenance a little bit to this building, but reducing the fuel oil, it's about $1,500 there. Public safety is pretty flat. Um, Fire station, same thing, very flat, um, and highway garage, because they have propane, and that's pretty consistent. Um, there's those, and the second set of buildings is the townhouse. Um, we have that increase because there was a chance that we might need a bunch of glycol for the winterizing, um, and that's why we went up on that. Um, it's, it's only $500 increase, really. Um, mm -hmm. uh, historical society, um, I we just went based on historic spending, um, went down her bucks there. Pretty. Carry Road is just the insurance that we carry on that. And then Yellow Barn, um, it's literally like, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars just just the basics, the, the water off rate, um, insurance we have to carry. And, um, like that's the water the utilities are the water off rate excuse me maintenance was just um the lease there was a rail uh rail trail lease master lease thing. agreement yeah master lease agreement so it's yep. it's just it's very small about 11 the box so um questions about building should we be is there somewhere in the budget where we should be accounting for the trailheads and like at least planning to set aside some funds for the trailheads, like even if it's a grant match or so that we can show that we can leverage um, because we have, you know, that full on scope now for two different trailheads in Hardwick and we don't really have any Like you mean because the kiosks and trash receptacles and things? The like trailhead, period. Okay. So the scoping study that we've been, that the, the MBDA and the we got that grant, you know, for the regional scoping study. Mm -hmm. And so the two trailheads have a price tag on them. Yes, it's true. Right? It's so true. It's we, a, astounding we, price tags on every right, trailhead but, in the region. Right. But if we don't have anywhere in our budget that we can show that we're, we have any basic interest in trying to actually do the thing that we've now got a scoping study for, then how do we leverage any Mm -hmm. anything for grants so we need another line item I, I don't know where it goes but I'm just saying I mean otherwise we we just sort of <clears throat> SOL well I will say so we're going to talk about this when we get to item five but um, we have capital general funds that accrue interest and we're going to talk about that and that's definitely an area that could be used for grant match it's not allocated mm. for anything, but mm -hmm. we currently have 23,000, and I know we're planning to use a little bit for something else here, but yeah. um, that continues to grow every year, um, and so that yeah. might be something It'd we can look nice at as, to, as a way to, to use grand yeah. match. We have this conversation, like, probably on a weekly basis. Yeah, and where, if we're able to allocate we put, it, then we can show yeah, it, you know. Where do we put grand bit. match funds, mm -hmm. and how do we, yeah. how do we, one in order to leverage them in order exactly. to say it's real yeah it's real money that we actually you know and how do you um how do you put that down in the budget and plan mm -hmm. for it you know because mm -hmm. we don't know what grant opportunities are going to sometimes we don't know what grant opportunities are going to be around and then right. a lot and of sometimes new ones there's are no match up. but sometimes there's right some match yeah 
So, I don't know. Is there is an area in here where we <clears throat> count for maintaining parks? I mean, it seems oh, yeah. that the, the trailheads could fall into that. Yeah, well, so in this, in, well, I did do have a backpack, streetscape, but streetscape maintenance we, and then downtown beauty would be the two, right? Yes, that's yeah. true. I would say streetscape maintenance would be that. Um, yeah. Or in the general fund, we have like bike path all phases. Well, there is no more of that, so we could just change that and start setting aside for that. For and, trailheads. And just for, call it trailheads instead of bike path. Right. Um, yeah. That's, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll just make a note of, for discussion, of, you know, before we finalize this. I would love to have that or parks change. Or and trailheads or something. Because that bike path thing irritated me no end because we did get a, like a million dollars to build a bike path and it never got built. Mm. And it ended up being used for the rail trail. Like Similar sorts right of things. Some there. of it did. Some yeah. of it did, right, yeah. We got some <laughs> and some we, of it went to the bridge. Pedestrian bridge. Pedestrian bridge, yeah. yeah. Some of them went to sidewalks, repaving. Yeah, in front of the school. You know why it never got used? Because oh. there was never enough. Well, it wasn't that it was between the time they got the money, it's in this, this week's journal, uh, the time they got the money and the time all the studies and all the stuff had been taken care of in order to use the money, <clears throat> Dwayne Wells had bought that building, had bought the Daniels Block, and put a parking lot all around it, which uh, blew the possibility for the bike trail they were supposed to be funding. Look at that. I know. Yeah. You can't keep everything, like, <laughs> you can't keep track of everything that That's everybody's right. doing. That's right. All right. All right, we're moving on from buildings. Moving on. To, all right, let's go to Fire department, very little changes, a little bit of shifting between purchases and repair. Can I say, can I sure. speak up for a second? So the public safety building, um, we're going to, in the spring, uh, the energy coordinator, uh, we're looking at grants to put in a, uh, to get that oil burning, um, forced hot air furnace out of the attic which is a, not It's in a good, the attic. Yep, yeah, it's in the addition. Oh, okay. And it pumps oil through the whole building. There's two oil lines and it's not a good setup. Yeah. And we're gonna try to put in a heat pump nice. in there. So we're going to be getting it's grant funds to do that. that Merc yep. Municipal energy. Yep. Yeah. And then, so we'll use less fuel oil. That'd be great. Yeah, and we have plenty of power there. There's 400 amp service, three phase service going into that building. So there won't be any <laughs> necessary electrical upgrades. You better make sure the transformer can do it. It can. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, there's 400 amp three yeah. phase going into that building. Three phase? Oh, it was the hospital. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So. Maybe we should put a charger up there, too. Sure. <laughs> put 10. <laughs> they can go hang out at the awesome. PD. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Well, there's going to be, I mean. No that, changes to fire, correct. really. Yeah, yeah. Nothing major. Wait. But then there's a lot in line items. There is. Let me go down here. So um, Do you have so I'm going to highlight the ones that really stick yeah. out. Um, professional yeah. services, yeah. which. Yeah. You're just adjusting to to adjusting uh, to actual actuals. Like yep. attorneys' fees have gone up, and and here's the thing: is Hardwick's growing. We've got a ton of stuff going on. Um, we often need what was that? to consult. <laughs> I mean, we're we're growing. We have projects. We have a lot yeah. happening. So we often need to consult with attorneys. Um, you know, we had consultant work on the gravel pit. There's just. <coughs> Um, there's and a lot happening, and so we need to sort of align it with what we've been spending. That's yep. where yep. that comes from. Yeah. Um, I just noted the library is an estimate at this point. I they won't be coming until the December second December meeting. So mm -hmm. I've got an estimate based on sort of a draft I've worked with them a little bit on. Um, the obviously the capital funds 
flow over to this. Right. Um, this and is, so you'll see yep. the huge jump in equipment, which we already talked about, an 80% increase there. Um, same thing, well, a very pretty a nominal increase in capital general, but that might change if we decide to do more. Um, gravel pit bond, the first year was interest only, so that's mm -hmm. gonna jump into the first year of repayment. The library bond, um, unfortunate news about that. Um, when you complete the applications, you apply for both of those notes, like the gravel pit and the library were done at the same time as 1,050,000, 550 and 500. Um, the intention was that the gravel pit would be on a 20 year amortization and the library would be on a 30 year amortization. Not sure where the lost communication was, um, but unfortunately the library was also placed on a 20 year amortization. Um, it's a very favorable rate. It, over the life of the loan, saves us about $130,000 but it also means this first year is the largest payment. It does go down every year after that, but it's a $48,000 payment the first year, Oof. which is more than we anticipated. But again, it's on 20 year instead of 30. Um, I did consult with them after to see if there was anything that we could do to change that. The only opportunity we'll have to change it is eight years in. We can, um, I cannot think of the word, it's not refinance, but um, uh, it's the word is escaping me, but there's there'll be an opportunity eight years in to extend it out if we wanted to do that, but it may not at that point. It might be right. a moot point or eight where it'll be at almost halfway done at that point. Mm -hmm. So um, that was definitely more than we expected. Um, capital fire equipment, a little bit of a bump up there. Um, hazard mitigation, I'm getting rid of because we haven't used it in four or five years. It's not to say that we won't have ice jam or whatever, but that kind of stuff, as far as I'm concerned, is fund balance. We need to stop budgeting $3,000 every year when we haven't used it. It used to be seven, and we went down to five, and then we went down to three, and so my feeling is we can take it out and just plan on that's what we have a fund balance for if we have to pay an excavator a few thousand dollars to do the ice jam or something like that. I think that's my opinion. Sounds good. Um, Wreck trails and rescue squad, those again are sort of preliminary estimates um, based on some figures I've thrown in. Um, so that's that's that. Um, and so yeah, it's it's pretty big percentage increase. Line items about 23% uh, with the bulk of that being um, kind of bond payments and the capital equipment fund set aside. Oof though, that's... When you look at that 23%, that's <laughs> I know. a lot. Anyway. That's not an indication that our budget is going up 23%. It's one category. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it's not panic. No. Yeah. Casey, suppose we had been on a 30-year instead of a 20-year. What would this payment be? Uh, it's like ballpark? 34 probably, like $14,000 less, 14 okay. or 16000 Yeah. Not nothing. But right. not. But not. I mean, I could. I can quickly tell you. How no, I don't. I don't. I don't need to have it. No. But. Yeah. So it's definitely not a. It's not like a make or break the budget thing. Right. It's mm -hmm. unfortunate that it's more than we expected. But okay. All right. So questions about this first round go around, and I hope that by the next meeting. Some of this information will, like the actual figures will become, a lot of this actually, the payments and stuff, that's all accurate, but things, I might have the rescue squad, I may have trails and recreation. Mm -hmm. So some of that stuff will be filling in as information comes in. Same thing with insurance, because we're about to get our VLCT insurance bills. Mm -hmm. So we have already heard about some increases. Um, unemployment, I think is going down a smidge. We expected property and casualty to increase, mm -hmm. as well as um, workers' comp. Actually, workers' comp is staying pretty level, I think. It's the property and casualty that we're going to see a bump up in. Hmm. Um, okay, so any further questions about fire and line items before we move on to the next department? Let's move on. Okay. All right, let's look at... Police. Um, so um, we have, I think, 
you know, overall the part that's going up a little over 6%, so it's not phenomenal. Um, I think the driving factor obviously is that we, we obviously have contract increases, but we also have market increases in order to retain, uh, excuse me, obtain and retain <laughs> officers we have to be competitive with our wages and um, the result is that if we want to get any officers we're going to have to bump up the, mm -hmm. the levels mm -hmm. do you have anything you want to add to that opie yeah i want um, you need more people you need more officers <clears throat> um, and this is just based on the current situation we have right. the four full-time our chief and I have three part-time, although we've really only had one, maybe two part-time most of the, a lot of the time, so, um, yeah. There was some discussion about an additional contract. Has anything happened to that? We have one officer on shift. Hmm. Right, so the times when we had a contract with Greensboro, we tried, we didn't always, but we typically would be shooting for two right. per shift, right? Yeah. We don't have a, I don't think we have a product to be going to other towns right. with. Mm -hmm. um, like Stowe, for example, is offering their new hires $15,000 sign, sign on bonuses. Mm -hmm. They're advertising on the radio and they're advertising in the Gazette. Oof. For officers. So departments are poaching other yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. department officers for full time officers. And then getting um, somebody to apply for the job and be a viable candidate is pretty tough. Mm -hmm. So if you know anybody who wants to be a police officer. <laughs> but it does. It does seem that Mike's been doing a good job. He's been doing a great job recruiting and yeah, yeah, yep. in in difficult times for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we could bump up the we could bump up this this budget two or three hundred thousand dollars and try to get more officers, but I don't think we're going to hire. Them. We'd have to really entice them financially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's tough to compete with the sign-on bonuses that we're seeing. I think. I know Stowe is fifteen thousand. I think Morrisville is seventy five hundred or something. State like. police is five thousand. It's just yeah. yeah. And state police is in tough shape. They're down how many people? I heard they have 80, 80 vacancies. Yeah. Fifty troopers. Wow. Okay. That's just a lot. Yep. So, so that's what we're. Okay, so that's so yep. careful what you wish for, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I'm just thinking every little boy who wants to grow up to be a policeman, you know, it's it's now a good career. Be, now they want to be YouTubers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. okay. Yes. All right. So that's that's the first rundown of police, and we actually only did a one-year contract with the police department, so um, we're in preliminary talks with yep. them for yep. a new contract that would start July 1st. So we, yep. I have sort of factored that in to the increase mm -hmm. and we'll see where we go from there. Let's move on to highway if we're yep. done for now. Yep. Okay. Highway. Um, it's flat. Yes, it's, it's pretty flat and the biggest, and you're thinking, what, why? Yeah. Okay. It's all because of fuel oil, because our uh, price is stabilized, yep. and so we can go down 20000 on that. And so you look, and there's stuff that's increases, but that that's why it's flat, is basically the $20,000 decrease in diesel fuel, because the prices have stabilized. Um, you know, went up a little bit on insurance, and, you know, retirement will go up, and Social Security will go up as salaries go up, and um, based on, like, spending, pretty much the only thing we could consider here is going a little bit higher on equipment expense equipment expense entails like you know all the stuff to the trucks parts tires chains like everything to do with its equipment maintenance and repair basically um, as you can see in fiscal year 23 we spent 72 we have often spent a couple years ago I think we spent 75 mm -hmm. but then 
maybe in 22 it was like 55 so it's it's anywhere okay. from like 55 to 75 that's where the 65 comes from okay we could consider going up a little bit on that um we go to 70 um yeah gravel and crushing is another topic we kind of talked about um mm -hmm. we kept it the same as the current year but with now that we own the new gravel pit um did we close on that mm -hmm. yes Yay. last thursday we Yay! Ownership. Oh, I should have put that in. There. Yeah, that's a big thing. That's so, awesome. So, um, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to open up the Act Two Fifty permit. Yeah, um, we need to do that now. Yep, we're in the process of it. You are. You got it. And then I want to blast and make our own, crush our own stuff. Yeah. And material. Yeah. Yeah. We need to do it. Yeah. So, so I don't know if that's that's one thing we need to discuss is that might need to go up if yep. we want to do that work. That, so the gravel crushing, we might need to go up to like 80 on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we could consider going up a little bit on equipment expense. But again, this is the, this is the first rundown. So um, the mud season materials, I went down a little bit because we're going to have our material, you know, potentially our own materials from the pit. Um, and I guess that's about it. Um, I had to go up on uniforms just because the cost of those have went up and then we do like boo allowances and things with the contracts. So yeah, that's aligning with what we spent previously. So it's pretty flat right now, but like I said, those are two categories for consideration is increasing the crushing and equipment expense. Um, and winter sand is still 10,000. We have two years up there. Yes, that's why, because there's some up there. There's some in the pit, like that we'll have access to. Sorry, I'm not understanding. It looks like we have stockpiled winter sand. Right, but it looks like we've got ten thousand. That's the same as what we budgeted last year. In the actual is twenty two. Um, but we had to buy it. We bought it. But we don't. Twenty three. Yeah. And but, so. But, are we, but we're not buying it this time, right? We, for two, we expect two years to have our, we already have a stockpile for two years. So for like fiscal year 24 and 25. Because we bought stockpiled winter sand with the pit. Right, so why, why do we have it in our budget? If we have the stockpile. So you think make, we should take it out completely? We're gonna make, we need to keep that going. This is to right. make no, to make no, the sand. Not. We need to have them. Yeah, like you always have two years corn. You always have next year's firewood cut. Yeah, well, you, maybe you do. <laughs> um, well, you should have. Yes, I agree. You should have. <laughs> Instead of don't burn green wood. Don't don't use sand. Have it, sand doesn't go bad. So okay, so the ten thousand is really the cost to produce the sand. It's not the cost to buy the sand. Right. Got it. Okay, I'm caught up now. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, didn't make the any changes to like, salt. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's where we get the ditch stone too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And There's a yep. mud season material. I'm caught up. It's all part of the screening. Part of the grand plan. But I want to I want to build out this pit. Yeah. Material. But so what's Gary, our Gary's gonna help. That. And our timeline on that is: Do we have any idea? Well, the active fit week, it'll be just. I think. Is it an amendment? An active well, fifty amendment. To blast, to blast. Yep. But we can still quarry. Right. Yeah. But the blasting is a Would amendment. Be an amendment. Yeah. Do we have any idea of the time frame for getting something like that through? We have blasted no, on okay. the amendment no, but okay. we can. There, we're still in an in executive order right now, so we could technically go and drill holes and, and light sticks of dynamite right now without a permit. Oh. Yeah. Maybe we should get some done. I'm thinking I have a call, I have a call tomorrow with Gary about it. All right, great. Carry on. Sounds like you're on the right track. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we just took ownership of the plant last week, or the pit last week. Last week. Three days we burn out. <laughs> I say we send. I say we send Danny down there, down the Crassberry Road with some with some dynamite. Dynamite. Yeah. Light them up. No, I, I've always had enough sense to stay away from. Eddie Eddie Keene was the dynamiter, not me. Yeah. 
<laughs> hey, Eddie used to have his blasting license. Yep. He did. he did all our local blasting for a number of years. <laughs> <laughs> I think Erwin just surrendered his. Yeah, Erwin too, yep. Okay. All right. Thank you, Casey. Well done. Yeah. Okay. Nice yes. work. Are we done? We're, no. No, but we're getting there. Oh, shoot. Getting. This was the biggest thing. This is why Casey laughed at me when I said it's going to be quick. <laughs> All right. But the rest of it should be. Well, she just everything's so drawn out with her. She just goes so. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. All right. And next is item two: Select Board to consider authorizing town manager to sign an agreement with the Northeast Kingdom Development Corporation relating to disposal of contaminated soil at the Yellow Barn site. Um, I can explain that this is basically a, a letter of understanding and the. The new market tax credit folks that we worked with to get some of the funding for the Yellow Barn asked that we have, uh, I don't remember where this came from, but they said, can we have an agreement with the town that the town's actually going to use that grant money that they got to clean up the soil? And I said, well, that's the only thing we can use it for. And they said, still, we want the agreement. So sure. that's what this is. Okay. okay. Do we have the thing? It was in our packet. Was it? I'm still on the packet is in the folder. That's I, what I mean. Yeah. Google. Things. She's got it. Yeah. Um, well, no, I don't have a paper copy of it, but I can pull it out. I can just sign it tomorrow. Right. I, I move that we authorize the town manager to sign an agreement with the NED, the NEKDC relating to disposal of contaminated soil at the Yellow Barn site. Second. Any more discussion? Uh. <laughs> No. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> That's such crazy shit right there, that whole thing. No, that'd be the wastewater plant. <laughs> are, are, you, uh, are you an I, an A, or an abstain? He said Oh, I'm an I'll go for it. Good idea. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He, he already said I? Yeah, he did. Oh, you already said I. I I it. I, he may have been. I I it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Next, uh, item three, select board to sign an employment contract with the town manager. We're going to try to keep our town manager employed. For one more for year. For one more year. Yeah. Um, I missed it, but he did take that makeup, right, that we offered. <laughs> <laughs> level funded. Level, the, the pay is level oh. funded. We have a... a, a yes, yeah, I'm fine. I saw it. Good. Okay, you saw it. All right. I just busted your balls. Uh, so moved. Can I say that? You can, if Casey's all right with it. Yeah. Do we need a motion? He, she's moving. We need second. a second. Uh, then any, I second any it. Any discussion? Can I sign? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries because that's everyone. Um, and next is. Item four is a letter of support for the TAP, um, oh, yeah. the Transportation Alternatives Program. And this was, look, correct me if I'm wrong. It's is a, this a letter of support or an approval to go forward to with proceed. the application? It is a to just a letter of support. It's a letter of support. That's how you, they, okay. that's how they intent. provide their. Like a letter of intent yes. to apply, something like that. I yeah. have, here's the letter. I don't know why. I'm this is the town oh, managers. Sorry. Okay. So yep. yeah, so at the last meeting, yeah. uh, you talked about the transfer, and one this of the things that came up was we yeah. wanted to yeah. talk about where the match would come from. Yes, we did. $60,000, $12,000 match, $48,000 grant, um, and what we talked about earlier was that if you wanted to do this, you could take it from the accrued interest in the capital general fund as the match that has 23000 in it. We are already using how much for the... Um, we had like 3,000, 4,000, is that a match on that? For? For the kiosk and that yeah. grant, it's what, two or 3,000 mm -hmm. we are Isn't planning 3, to use. 3,500 maybe. Yeah. So let's say there's about 20,000 left in that accrued interest and you could decide to use that <coughs> for the grant match. Or we can build it into our budget. For next year, yeah. starting in July. Yeah, which 
is when we would probably need to produce that grant match anyways mm -hmm. after yeah, I don't it'll know. be a while anyway. I mean, yeah. I can't imagine. I'm kind of so there's that too. We had so that yes, idea options. at the end of the day right, you today. Could, yeah. It feels like the way this budget is going to go, it'd be better if we just use, use the, the interest. interest. Yeah. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Okay. This is the one I was going to So, do. Danny, I think you maybe, you were, did you miss last time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so um, this is, uh, what we're talking about is um, doing a planning study or a f is it feasibility scoping study? study? Scoping study on uh, pedestrian uh, use on Mill Street because it's a little bit. And then it curves up Main Street a little bit right at that intersection. Yeah, so it goes from Jiffy Mart to um, uh, kind of almost to the, ci to the civic standard. Right. Up around past Mike's. Yeah. Yeah. Why? And wow. so, yeah. Um, and you can't yeah. apply for the grant unless you get a scoping study. You, you're not eligible for the grant unless you get this. This step has to come first. Right. So uh, I just have not. Yeah. I, I mean, if you guys all think of something we should do, I, I get concerned about all these studies and grants and stuff that we do on on things that are we're trying to solve problems that are difficult problems not easily solved and i know the argument's always been if we you know we need to do something so i just i think we, we're doing a lot of scoping a lot of planning and i don't think we're accomplishing a lot i think we're doing a, i think we've got we planned and scoped and planned and scoped the next 25 years worth of work and we're not accomplishing any of it. That's my concern. So um, not exactly if you guys feel that the best thing to do is to do another scoping and planning study on another project uh, versus put our resources into things that we have in the fire right now that are well, well, well over budget and over time, um, then I'll go along with it, but I'm not a huge supporter. So that's my speech. So the Planning Commission's worked quite a long time on doing these walking, pedestrian walking studies and all the preparation for this thing. This is money that's available to us because we're designated downtown and it requires us to do the scoping before it's a step that has to happen before yeah. we can get to the grant that actually does the work on the sidewalks that are severely deteriorated in our downtown so you know or they don't exist at all like that whole section in front of the uh old sitco station the grace and then all that where there's no sidewalk at all it's just one big open paved area where people are walking so so i get it important thing i think it is as they've, as they've walked for a couple of centuries but that's not yeah so it's been that way for it's been that way for sixty years. So I've done a lot, but yes. yeah, whatever. I mean, so it goes back to the other side of town where we put new sidewalks and new crosswalks and you know, um, no parking signs that we don't deal with and just a number of things that you know we did. We did this big lighting project a few years ago, and our main street's so dark you can't even see. Um, I, it just. I, I'm not 100%, I'm just letting you know, I'm not 100% confident that if we keep planning, keep scoping, we're going to amount to anything. We need to start problem solving. Um, and, so uh, how would you solve speech. the problem like, that is the sidewalks in downtown? And accessibility for people who need to I walk around? I don't know, I don't know, is there anything you're going to do there that's going to improve, improve them? You know, there's, I don't see what, I don't see what's wrong with the way the sidewalks are. Well, Nobody uses the crosswalks anyway, so well, um, yeah, it is what it is. I, I'll go along with it, but I just, you know, I'm voicing my opinion that we need to start closing on some of these things and not just continue to plan, 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 plan. You have to plan in order so, to do something. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm hearing I'm hearing both sides of this, and I guess my concern is um, is a capacity concern 
that we have, we actually have a bunch of projects that are going now that are going well and, and moving either in construction or getting to construction. I, I feel pretty strongly that the town highway garage needs to be on the top of our list. Um, and I'm just wondering from a capacity standpoint from our human resources, like writing the grants, you know, maintain, like uh, administering the grants, just beyond, you know, beyond even the money, like do we, where do we sit for our capacity and our priorities? Like I agree, like when I, I am a pedestrian in that area someplace sometimes, I do see people using the crosswalks a lot. Mm -hmm. I do see a lot more uh, foot traffic since the co-op moved down on that end of Mill Street. And it is, it's pretty wide open. The, those curb cuts are really long in places. However, we have other things we're doing and do we have the capacity to take this on now? That's my only question. This feels like a short-term project. I mean, we have to do the scoping, and they'll plan it, and then they'll do it. But the town garage is multiple years of getting it engineered and planned and stuff like this that I wouldn't be surprised if this Mill Street thing is done by the time we get started on the... The planning, I, the, the scoping could be done. Yeah. I would say that the scope, this would be like the grant, and just like putting it out there, I'm not taking a side right now. I don't have trouble taking sides. <laughs> um, is we get a consultant to do a scoping study. Uh, Mill Street is not going to change. So the scoping study may sit for a little bit, year or two, before we go out and get the funds to make the improvements mm -hmm. or, or not. If we, make, we may be able to go out and get the funds for the improvements. Um, I, I hear all the concerns, and I think they're all valid. Um, but it, this is also like, this is the the game. This is yeah, like it is. Big, That's how you get like, forward. This is the big, yep. you know, the choo choo, and it's like we're now ready to go to with the scoping studies we got for the trailheads. We're now ready to go to and get it engineered and designed. And then after the engineering and design, we can go out for construction. So this is like the, I was always under this, you know, why can't we just do the work? But yeah. it, there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's what I thought first coming into this job was. We can always do the work if we want to pay for it but all. It, exactly. I mean, exactly. that's the and thing. And it's not, it may this not is, be right because we didn't you... get a scoping study. Yeah. Or we didn't get an engineer. Or we didn't, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, so I see the we don't want to pay for it all. We don't want to have to come right. up with every cent of what it would take to make that street mm -hmm. actually truly accessible and safe for people who have a difficulty, um, you know, yeah. mobility challenges. And we're getting a lot of there. calls about the crosswalk at the municipal parking lot, across mm -hmm. the market. So mm -hmm. there, this is needed. Something is needed. And whether we continue so you're getting calls in your office about pedestrian access in this in that this. crosswalk that yep. the state didn't repaint because right. they don't they didn't put one there because we don't have the ADA access from the municipal uh, lot over to the co op. Uh, yeah, we, some, but we need that. We do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and I guess my only other thing is if so, I just would hate to invest the time and money in the scoping study now come to find like there's a really big price tag on actually doing the work and even our part of like even if we get funding we have a match and we put it off a few years and then th there, are, there have been things in this town where there have been scoping studies it doesn't get done for 10 years and you have to do another scoping study I don't want this to be one of those things right. that's all me neither. And I and yeah. I wonder what because nothing gets less expensive to do. That's right. And so no, and but yeah. But this is the step before the I know next step. But are we ready to take the next step after we take this step? That's what I'm looking at. It's another grant. Yeah, and another match. Mm -hmm. That'll be a much bigger number. 
Possibly, yeah. Well, it's going to cost more to build it than to study yeah. it. If we don't do it now, it's going to cost more. Down the road, on, I agree. Right? No matter. But, uh, but we have a whole bunch of stuff going on. Anyway, you're saying that this is a there is a need. Let's go for this. I mean, don't put this on my shoulders. I'm not putting it on your shoulders, <laughs> but I'm just listening to But you're saying there's a need. Sherry's saying, I mean, look, other... we've been working on this for a long time, and we have a need. Danny's saying we've got, we're too many irons in the fire. Too many irons in the fire, or something to that effect. I'm putting I'm putting some irons in his mouth right now. <laughs> and the, other thing is, the other question that you had at the last meeting was why it was so much for that match, and that. that's based no on, for the scoping study for the scoping study. Yeah, um, and that's based on the cost of previous scoping studies. I mean, Tracy just looked it up, but you can. We can decide that we don't want to, you know, we can attach an amount not to exceed blank. Yep. You know? Okay. So, I don't know. I, you know, maybe we don't exceed Do 15 we need grand or something like that. So, I'm okay. after all that going around and around, <coughs> uh, we, yeah, I guess I come down. Ultimately, after our long discussion, I come down and decide that, that we probably should proceed with doing that, I guess. Do you need a motion? We, we, yeah. we do need a motion to, uh, to, do, to sign the letter of support. Oh, to actually, it looks like to have a motion should be to have the chair sign the letter of support. Uh -huh. <coughs> so moved. And we may not get the grant. Right, we may not get the grant. Okay, after all that, and we don't have to. Uh, Is there a second? Second. Danny. Danny's walking away. <laughs> we're gonna, you want to vote? I, we're all in favor of uh, having the, the select board chair sign a letter of support for the transportation alternative program grant application. Please say aye. 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 You said you're on mute. That's what you said. Any opposed? Yes. You're voting aye? Aye. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Only because OP, OP, OP does such a good job of not choosing sides. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you. Oh, I should sign this then, eh? Mm -hmm. um, next item, item five is a resolution. Okay. What we need. <clears throat> We, is we need to, um, a, a res, basically it's a resolution uh, enabling the town manager to sign uh, and for the town to receive $1.2 million in Brownfield's money to get rid of the contaminated soil at the Yellow Barn. The dirty dirt. So moved. Second. Any uh, discussion? So, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Danny said aye. Okay, so that's everybody. Motion carries. Thank you, Danny. You going snowmobiling? I just got to do uh, work overalls. Let's see them. Show them. Show them. Come on. Come on. No, they're nice. I like how nice they are. They're like nylon. They're not a. Uh... Okay. We round back. Like a little. Oh, he I just took it. his pants off on camera. Let's keep going. They're just having these meetings at home is a lot have more a fun. Like we <laughs> All right. Some of us have to get. Should we clap? Some of us have to get home to dinner. All right. Hang on. So, uh, select board reports. Um, so at the last solid waste district meeting, they said that they are expecting to reopen the ARC um, in Barry at the old location um, the week after Thanksgiving. I think that that is true. Um, and uh, there's, it's, they're limiting the, the things that they take, but they are going to take pellet bags and a bunch of other things. So. It's worth checking the website if that's something that people are interested in. The, the ARC is supposed to be reopening um, in the old location. That's great. Yeah, I have a lot of plastic that's got to go over there. All right. 
Uh, new business or old business? Um, old business, we need to set up a meeting time. We talked with Rescue that came and we talked oh, about setting right. up a, a meeting with Rescue and the select board or the select board needs to set up a special meeting to start talking about the public works you know, facility, what we're doing over there, start to figure out something. And maybe it needs yep. to include the you know, so also development person. Yeah, we did have a meeting with our RPC about moving the fire station. Right, and we're going to look for yeah planning funds. And, and uh, we voted to approve those planning funds. Yeah, or to yeah last time. So I just as long as we're keeping that role, we're keeping. You know, I think that that's think the next that, step is to yeah. to get that, and, and that was the yeah. Because that's some planning that we need to do. <laughs> so. Um, I also want just going to pop out of the yeah. air. I also want to bring up an, under old business um, at our last meeting. I was noticing in the minutes. Um, the Kaylee asked the question about what happens with properties that are subject to FEMA buyout. We have stipulations, but like who's responsible for it? Like say. She asked the question, like, say, like the motel property, for example. What happens if that gets bought out? Who cleans it up? Who finishes the cleaning grant, it up? The, the grant pays for the demolition and cleanup of the property. Oh. A FEMA grant. Uh, that's okay. part of the, yeah. There's Great. three buckets of, there's, or two buckets of money. There's the money that goes to the, the seller. Yep. And then there's the money that goes to the town yep. for cleanup. So the town gets the money and the town does the cleanup? Um, or we hire somebody to do the cleanup. No, but I mean, we make we 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 make the cleanup happen, and we pay I for it with the, the grant money. The, the FEMA one. Yeah. But some of our properties are going to state buyouts. They're state buyout state also. State buyout program. Yeah. State okay. hazard mitigation buyouts. I think they work the same way. It might be um, basically the same way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Kaylee I don't know just if asked it's a the question. Reimbursement. I don't know if it's a okay. reimbursement or if they just give us right what it take what it takes to clean it up. So Kaylee just asked last time, and we I said we were pretty sure that you would know, but you weren't here. So yeah, I bring it up. Great. Yeah, it's, a, it's no cost to that box if we choose to do something with it or allow some use of it then it becomes the responsibility of ours the, the uses right. are pretty like in Wolcott you know. they put a they put a ball field up in North Wolcott on they yeah. bought a couple of houses years ago up there off the wild branch yeah the, the town so they wanted to put a ball field baseball field there a little league field recreation facilities are allowed but then they never they don't take care of it so it, you know what I mean it was like there was yeah which so you got to plan for those things. <laughs> so the old one old business thing, you know the the little park that's down there on Granite Street and whatever that community park that has a Atkins Field, the one with the rain garden, whatever Hodgson the one Field. that has the chain link fence Hodgson around. Field. Hodgson Field, yeah. It's the bushes all around that that's make the visibility system. of that we that's a storm. Can't do anything with that. It's really hard to see cars yeah. coming. Yeah, it's a stormwater system. That's I think the we rain can, garden. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be okay. absorbing rainwater. Yeah, it just makes visibility. I can hard. look at the man that management plan and see because I've had the same question. Yeah, it's hard to we, see. Yeah, and let, I suppose if people in giant trucks are way up high. They can see whether anything's coming, but I can't. Okay. Yeah. So Who I ordered check. the cutting of the Magbell Road? Uh, do you like it? Good job there. Uh, I ordered it then. <laughs> uh, good job. But it was us. It wasn't hydroelectric, right? Yes, correct. It was uh, Mike Reno using up the last of our brush cutting funds. That was well used right there. That was a good one. Yep. All right. Now if we can get the light department to trim underneath their lines, then we'll be good. They're, they're working on it. All right. Um, I just want to say, if you guys want... A, I talked to the general manager of HED and I asked him if we were going to have a meeting and their commissioners have not given him any agenda items and you guys have not given me any agenda items. Well, we want to talk meeting. about the 
that funding opportunity I, through. I did send an email out asking for agenda items. Whatever that thing is called, red leg or whatever it's called. Oh yeah, the USDA red leg. For yeah. the, we can just we for may the, be able to just give them that information. That's true. For creamery well, road. All of what we were going to, oh, yeah. When we were talking about the meeting, we thought there was some litigation issues that we're going to take some compromising or something and none of that ever materialized so i mean the questions that we were going to answer at this meeting uh, some of them aren't going to be answered I don't so think that's we're all at that level yet i don't think we're there yet with that. okay so maybe we hold for now well, that's what I'm saying. I don't think that, did, don't we have to wait for some stuff to happen before we have that discussion on that issue? Yes. Yep. Yeah, so. Okay, so yeah. we'll. So we'll, it's that other funding opportunity that. I can. But we might as well we, keep that until we've done some of our planning. Yep. Yep. We're talking about the funding, Eric, that we talked about way back that they could have gotten from USDA or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Is that, yeah. is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Like yes. Other yeah. grant that they yep. want to do? Yep. Yeah, that would benefit yeah. us tremendously. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, that's enough of a reason for me to talk to them, but. Me too, Danny. I got a babysitter, so it's faster I can get out of here unless I have to So, happy. all right. All right. <laughs> let's, let's consider, you know what? I'll, I'm planning to go to the, their, they have a regular meeting on Monday. I'm going to that anyway. I can raise right. that. I can raise that. Okay. Do they still meet over there or do they They're meet meeting here? right here. Okay. But I'll probably be at that meeting as well. Nice. Yeah. So it's uh, their third Mondays now at 4 p.m. We can just delegate two members of the select board to alternate and go to those commissioners. We feel like we're not being kept in the loop, or we feel like there, we want to keep an eye. Like I feel it's eye, it's helpful just, for me to. I went yeah, to one. I like going to. It. It's it's so really this helpful. This is a deal. This is my gut feeling right now. Is the last two times I've heard those people speak, there's a total different tone in their voices and their demeanor in what it was two years ago. It is not a rosy time. It is not all, all uh, unicorns and rainbows over there right now. Right. And I don't trust. I don't trust them. I don't trust them. As far as you know what I'm saying. Uh, I don't believe they would. They, they take into consideration our thoughts or our position with that light department unless we're sitting at the table. Yeah. Like so they're talking about incurring debt now. They're talking about how the CPA, CY, CYDK is making them change from, you know, cash to being uh, borrowing money. Uh, they're talking about a lot of things that are way different than what they've talked about previously in the last three years ago. You know, basically switching. They're, they're, they're talking about taking on a lot of debt versus, or taking on debt versus operating, you know, kind of in a cash. Yeah, you know, a good place, and we know in the, from the past that they have, you know, done things that didn't necessarily agree with the way we think things should be done. Is that be a plight? Uh, I just think right now it sounds like a time we should be keeping an eye on them, or at so, least being involved in a dialogue with them. So, so like I was saying, I think, yeah, I think it might be a good idea to publicly appoint two representatives from the select board to attend these meetings or uh, a representative from the select board and the town manager or i think it's just it might be a good idea for us to actually attend these i cannot meetings make monday night i'm in burlington on. monday working i won't be not i won't be back by four yeah that's fine but we could um we could at our at a meeting every month at our first meeting for example we could say yeah. who's, who's going to the hardwick electric meeting this month Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'm going this month. Yep, and okay. I'll and I went last month, and, I'll and you it. did too. Yep, I had it on my calendar, right. so I could go. Well, we can't. Three of us can't go. Remember? No, that. that's fine. Yep. Three. And we don't want. We don't want to. Uh, right. We don't want to go in there through. You know, too strong. Anyway. No. No, we just want to. It, it's a good way to I form think, the communication link. 
Yeah. Well, it's us actually looking, you know, it's us actually doing something instead of us expecting something. Yep, exactly. Instead of us expecting them to bring us the information, we've now decided it's important enough to us as a board, so we're going to go get the information. We're doing both. And that's a huge. That's a huge swing. Yeah. In, in, in the way we're doing business, including honestly, guys, if we want to be the ones that are part of the decision making, it, some of the responsibility has to be ours as well, right? Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's a good thing, even though it came about kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Really weird. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Motion to adjourn. So it's Eric and Eric and Opie this Monday. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and we'll we'll hit on in December. We'll decide who's going. We'll decide. Yep. Yep. Good deal. All right. Good work. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Motion so uh, enjoy your new slacks. Dave. All right. I'm gonna adjourn I'm us. Gonna. Ad adjourn. Meeting adjourned.